Eli Whitney went through so much in order to patent the cotton gin. He was introduced to farming later in his life, so it is incredible that he was able to influence the business so much. When Eli Whitney left New England and went south in the late 1700s, he had no idea that within the next year he would invent a machine that would profoundly change the course of American history. A graduate of Yale, Whitney had given some thought to become a lawyer. Although, like many college graduates of the day, he had debts to repay. First, and he needed to get a job. Reluctantly, he left Massachusetts to assume the position of a private tutor on a plantation in Georgia. While in Georgia, Whitney learned that the South planters were in need of a way of making the growing of cotton profitable. Long staple cotton, which was easy to separate from its seeds, could be grown only in coastal areas. But one type that grew inland had sticky green seeds that were incredibly time-consuming to pick up the cotton balls. In hopes of making a patentable machine, Whitney put aside his plans to study law instead of think tinker throughout the winter and spring in a secret workshop provided by Catherine Green. Within months, he created the cotton gin. A small gin could be one-handed cranked. Larger versions could be harnessed to a horse or driven by water power. One man and horse will do more than 50 men with these old machines, wrote Whitney to his father. About 3,000 bales of cotton were produced in America each year. A bale was equal to about 500 pounds. By 1801, with the spread of the cotton gin, cotton production grew to 100,000 bales a year. After the disruptions of the War of 1812, production reached 400,000 bales a year. As America was expanding through the land acquired in the Louisiana Purchase of 1803, yearly production exploded to 4 million bales. Cotton was king. It exceeded the value of all other American products combined, about three-fifths of America's economic output. But instead of reducing the need for labor, the cotton gin propelled it as more slaves were needed to plant and harvest king cotton. The cotton gin and the demand of northern and English factories recharted the course of American slavery. In 1790, America's first official census counted nearly 700,000 slaves. By 1810, Two years after the slave trade was banned in America, the number had shot up to more than one million. During the next 50 years, that number exploded to nearly four million slaves in 1860.